Hi, my name's Steve Head, and I'd just like to talk about air-to-air -air, air source heat pumps. Um, I want to ex just give you my experience of them and show you my install and my property. So there is the outdoor unit. Um, you can see it's there on our balcony. This is a south-facing, um, covered, so it's um, not exposed to the elements. And so that basically is south-south-east. So it's in a pretty good condition position for um, not getting all frosted up or anything like that. But um, I've had air source heat pumps in my homes, various homes for over 10 years now. And I'd just like to show you this one and what's exclusively useful about it. And also the size of the property that it's heating. So basically there is the outdoor unit, the indoor unit. And as you can see, it's not a high wall mounted unit, it's low wall. It could low, go even lower, it could be mounted. Um, so this actually is like the foot and it sits on the floor but the most important thing about this which is overlooked by most installers they want to put it up there which is because their entire experience is in cooling and of course you want your cooling high up what that does is it stratifies it tries to blow um, warm air from up there of course it just basically curves back up and rises to the ceiling again and the thermostat for this device is built into this remote. So it tries to reach the set point wherever this is positioned. And this is, of course, now at around head height when you're sat down. So this device over here, this device, this unit, what it does is it blows at the moment because it's a heating, it's a heating season. It blows hot air out of these louvers here downwards so you get you get a nice hot air coming out there as well this flap also opens up and it, you can direct it up if it's a very hot summer summer's day and you want cooling but it also so it, at the same time it, you can see from the little diagram here um it blows out up down you can choose whether it comes out the top the bottom or both it draws in through here through a filter now what that does is it makes sure that all of the warm air is coming out and going along the floor so you get the heat from the floor upwards and what that means is you get no draft and you get no stratification and it means that basically the set temperature that you set over here wherever the remote is at is what this device works to now you need to know of course the size of the property it's dealing with this is a th this is a 3.5 kilowatt um, output unit from Toshiba um, I'll show you the uh, energy rating on this thing, if you can see that there. The SCOP in this area, which is the pink area, because I'm in the southwest of England, it has an S seasonal COP of 6.3, which is phenomenal. That's 6.3 units of, of heat out for every one unit of electricity you put into it. So I thought I'd show you that. Um, the cooling, I'm not interested in particularly. Um, this property doesn't get particularly hot, but the, okay, let me just show you what it's what that three and a half kilowatt unit has to heat. This is a top floor asset conversion type flat, so it's exposed on five sides. You basically you've got all four walls plus the, plus the roof. Large south facing double glazing, which is say it's built in two thousand and five, so it's not exactly brand new build. Um, what I've done is I've added extra. Uh, insulation to all of the walls to about uh, an extra 30 mil of, uh, of rock wall to the uh, uh, all of the low walls make sure it's nicely draft proofed um so that adequately of course heats this particular open space so you see the size of it we have a lot of space over here for an office um we also have to make sure that the kitchen area which is open plan is quite large and uh, you can see there's quite a large dining area as well. So I'm just giving you the site. So, you know, I mean, obviously a very small property would be very inexpensive to heat. And you can also see that I'm currently watching air to air heat pumps um, by Heat Geek, which is what prompted me to make this video. Also, you'll see there's a uh, underneath the TV, there's a Google Home uh, device that allows me to control a lot of devices in the house. Um, but that includes um, the aircon unit. So I can turn that on and off from wherever I am in the world. 
and these little devices here next to the remote these things are from Govi they constantly take the temperature in the room and put it on the internet so I can always view the temp so I always know what the temperature is in the front room so to show you how big this place is so it's not like I'm trying to heat a cupboard or something like that um, that's the main living area we then have a hallway um, which is quite large just a utility cupboard into the, in that side there um, there is a bathroom which is a decent sized bathroom there just so you can see it's not like microscopic there's a spare bedroom there which is big enough for a double bed as you can see and some furniture and things and the master bedroom which is right at the other end of the property so I'll just take you and show you this is quite a large room there's a king size bed and I'm just trying to give you some sort of indication as to how big this property actually is okay so I'll just give you just so you know that you know this isn't a cupboard sized property because I'm going to talk about how effective and how you know how cheap it actually is to run um, the air source heat pump and I'll prove that to you with um, um, some stats in a second and also last thing I want to show you there's a grill here right above our heads um, and I'll explain that as I walk around that is connected to a ducted fan which is behind the wall there the ducting runs all the way back down behind the walls it's got again duct the ducting has 30 mil of insulation right around it to make sure it doesn't lose any heat and what there is there's a very strange looking thing you might be thinking what is that there it looks like an odd <coughs> thing to have on the wall but essentially behind there there is the other end and you can see so basically the ducted fan draws air in through here and I just use this to help guide extra heat so what that does there is it captures some of the heat coming out of the top of the top vents there um, the, the next the, the fan draws through there creates a negative pressure in the um, front room pushes it out the other end of the property creates a positive pressure in the bedroom and so basically we get a circulation going through the property um, of heat coming from there and it exits just at the far end of the property above the bed now in the summer that's really nice because of course what we can do is we can keep the windows in this room open and have fresh air and it will come out and keep us nice and cool it's completely silent um, but in the winter of course what it does is it pumps out the heat from the at the top of the aircon unit which is um, and it drops it out into the bedroom and round and round the air goes we always leave a slight gap in the door as you can see to allow the air to go from the bedroom back into here now you might think what about the cost so i've pr i've got a printout here i'll just see if i can make it look um easy to read so i'll check it on the floor so first of all this is the bedroom <coughs> average temperatures for october so what we're looking at here is an average temperature there of around uh, 21 in the bedroom um, it peaks out, of course, if uh, you get a hot day. Um, there's a few peaks there for hot days, or we've just had the heating on too high. But typically, the bedroom temperature is knocking around, certainly at um, the end of October. Um, it ranges around, what are, we, what are we on there? 19 at the, that's 19, that's 21 and a half. So, you know, you're kicking around the 21 degree mark for the bedroom, um, you know, in October. We don't have a gas boiler, I must point out. This is purely electricity. What we also have here is the front room itself, which we like to keep warmer than the, uh, you can see it says front room. And uh, this is all taken from the, um, the Gobi little uh, sensor. And as you can see, because um, we've got south facing windows, a couple of hot days, it gets quite warm, but it averages around 23.2. You can see basically it cools down at night goes up during a day when we turn the heating on but it doesn't fluctuate much I mean that's 21 degrees essentially there that may have been a day we had all the windows and doors open and of course it cools the place down um, but uh, so you can see we live that we live at a very comfortable uh, average of around 23 so in the evenings it's 24 now the last thing I want to show you is how much does this all cost well this is direct printout from our British gas electricity app and you can see in August, which was stinking hot, we used nearly 
uh, £78 worth of electricity. And for October, which uh, is £85.38. So having extra lighting because it's darker in the evenings, of course, and plus having the uh, Toshiba on, has cost absolutely nothing, about eight pounds extra. Now bear in mind, um, we get a government uh, grant now for 66 pounds. So our energy bill for October was actually, what's that, 19 pounds? So the entire property all use electricity um all to say we don't have gas so that, that includes uh, we got a electric cooker over there we've got electric hob there um we have what we have here for hot water is we don't use a water tank we have an under sink uh, underneath there there's a uh, instant uh, hot water heater um which provides as soon as you turn the tap on hot water so we've got no tank with storage in it and um there's something very similar um, in the bathroom, uh, basically inside the utility room, there's a there's a giant tank behind the wall there, which is completely useless, and um, it has there's an instant electric water heater. As soon as you turn this tap on here, turns it on, and of course there's an electric shower there, which of course only comes on when you use it. So what I was taught, what I really wanted to just say is that the importance of air to air heat pumps and their installation is do not put them high up that is the biggest mistake in my last house I had two Mitsubishis uh, they were high up and of course you get if you're lucky a hot head and if you're on and you always get cold feet there's always stratification the unit works too hard to try and uh, get it to the correct temperature where you are because it is high up and the heat comes out and goes straight up and warms the spiders and the light bulbs or whatever it is above your head. So that's really all I wanted to say. Um, these things are incredibly quiet. They are incredibly efficient. They and you get no draft whatsoever when you're sat over here. Oh yeah, and we're also what that's a seven. That is a seventy-inch TV. So. We run that that's on all the time in the evenings and things. And and, and I only work part time, so I'm at home half, uh, um, uh, two and a half, uh, three, four and a half days a week. I'm at home. Um, so it's not as if there's nobody in the property. And I still manage to keep the temperature at the level I was showing you down here. And the bills are peanuts. I say between now and, uh, what is it, uh, March? We're going to get a government grant, so I think our monthly energy bill is going to be in the order of 20 to £25. Pounds. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening.